Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to the Chem Complete channel. Professor Tomney here, and I have a, another lecture today in the subject of thermochemistry and thermodynamics. So in today's lecture, we are going to take a look at heat capacity and the specific heat of certain substances and how they tie into thermodynamics and heat energy. So that is all coming up on the channel right now. Okay, so let's get started with heat capacity and specific heat. So I want to define heat capacity and then we can kind of further define or talk about why we go with specific heat. So heat capacity, which is represented with a capital C in chemistry, is the quantity of heat that's going to be needed to raise the temperature of a given sample of substance by one degree Celsius. So we have actually come across heat capacity and specific heat in one of the prior lectures. And that was when we were doing the introduction to thermodynamics and talking about the first law of thermodynamics, we were looking at the different energy units that we typically can use, like metric units. And joule was the most common one, but then we also mentioned calorie. And calorie was 4.18 joules of energy. And it got its definition or its value from the specific heat associated with water. So we are going to look here at what specific heat actually is. So given that heat capacity is going to be the temperature, uh, or excuse me, the uh, quantity of heat to raise the temperature of a sample of substance, that term sample of substance is not giving you an actual quantity. So what you need is something that can kind of be standardized based on a per gram or per some amount, right? Per gram, per mole, whatever it might be. And so we do it on a per gram basis in chemistry. So because the heat capacity is dependent on the amount of material that's actually going to be present, we express it as specific heat of a given material. And you can see this equation here. This is how we determine or work with specific heat. So Q from our previous lectures we know represents heat or energy itself. And then that will be equal to S where we have specific heat, M where we have mass, and delta T where we have a change in temperature. So the specific heat of a substance is going to be in units of joule per gram times Celsius. The mass is obviously going to be in grams. That's the mass of material that we're working with. And then delta T, delta T, the change in temperature, is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature. And that difference in temperature can be used to tie back into the heat that was actually involved in the situation. So those are the main components that we're working with. Let's take a look at some examples to practice here. So this first example says calculate the heat absorbed by 15 grams of water to raise its temperature from 20 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. The specified heat of water is 4.18 joules per gram times Celsius. So what you should do is, as always, pause the video, see if you can figure out this by yourself, and then unpause if you get stuck or if you have an answer and you're ready to go through with your walkthrough. All right, so hopefully everybody had a chance to give this a shot. The first thing I'm going to do here is just figure out what my delta T is. So because delta T can be represented as the TF minus the TI, you have to read your problems carefully to see what final and initial is. Sometimes if you're in a rush or you're not realizing if the temperature is going up or down, you could switch these. This is not always guaranteed to be a positive value, right? Because the temperature could be lower in the end. And that would just give a Q with a negative sign, which we know means exothermic or a transfer, right, of that energy into the surroundings. So in this case, the raise in temperature was from 20 to 50, with 50 being the final temperature. So we can say, 50 
degrees Celsius minus the 20 degrees Celsius, and that will give us a delta T of 30 degrees Celsius. So in this case, the change in temperature is equal to 30 degrees Celsius. Now we already have the mass, it's 15 grams, and we have the specific heat of water at 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. So I can calculate, because it's saying calculate the heat absorbed, Q is heat, so I can calculate that by taking S, which will be the 4.1, whoops, 4.18, and make sure that you are including your units here, even though you might be able to get through the math quick, most professors are going to be looking for units when you're doing these. Okay, it's 15 grams, so 15.0 grams. Those grams are going to cancel out there. And then the temperature difference is going to be 30 degrees Celsius. Again, the Celsius will cancel out, leaving just joules, and so we will end up with a heat value when we finish here. Now, if we've got the specific heat by definition, we've got three sig figs here and three sig figs here. Our answer should have three sig figs. And if you get your answer, it's going to be in the magnitude of thousands. So we will take 1.88 times 10 to the third joules. Now, if you wanted to, you could convert this and express it in kilojoules, and that would also be fine. But that would be the correct answer for this solution here. All right, so let's go ahead and try one more. Now we have iron metal. So iron metal has a specific heat of 0.449 joules per gram times Celsius. Now notice, I just want to point out here, the iron, its specific heat is much lower. And that kind of makes sense. If you think about metal, metal is pretty conductive to heat, especially iron, whereas water is fairly robust against heat. It takes a lot of time and a lot of energy to heat the water up, right? And so a smaller value here logically makes sense because what we're saying is you need a lot less energy to get a gram of iron to go up by one degree Celsius, okay? So just keeping that in mind as you're seeing these different values here, water would be much higher than a metal, especially a metal like iron would be, that's very conductive to heat. Okay, so how much heat is transferred to a five gram piece of iron that is initially at 20 degrees Celsius, so that's Ti, when placed into a pot of boiling water at 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what we want to do here is set it up, go ahead and try this just as you did for the other one, and solve for your uh, delta T, and then go ahead and solve for the actual answer itself. Okay, hopefully everybody had a chance to do that. So when we take a look here, the final is going to be the 100 degrees in the boiling pot because it says it was initially at 20 degrees Celsius, right? So my delta T here is going to be 100 degrees Celsius minus the 20 degrees Celsius. And so what I would get is 80.0 degrees Celsius for delta T. So again, I'm looking to see how much heat is transferred. So I'm solving for Q. You may be given heat in certain scenarios and be asked to solve for the specific heat or how much of the material there was in grams and so on. Okay, so point zero, I'm sorry, point four, four, nine, and that is joules per gram Celsius. Now the mass was five grams, 5.00 grams, and then the delta T is 80. Oh my goodness, I am sorry, I'm messing these up here, 80. Okay, degrees Celsius. So if we take a look at this and we put it into our calculator, you should get back 179.6. So we can round that up to 180 joules of energy. So that would be the correct answer there. All right, so that wraps up heat capacity and specific heat with some problems that you were able to practice. 
So head on over to chemcomplete.com, check out our free resources. It's a great way to support the channel. If you have any questions, you can also get a hold of me over there if you wanted some one-on-one -on -one tutoring or if you wanted to purchase one of the affordable guides to help get you through your semester. It's a great way to support the channel. Liking the video will always help boost us in the algorithm. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will get back to you if you comment and subscribing will keep you up to date. So that is all for this lecture and I will see everybody next time. Thank you.